Hello, I'm Flora. And I'm Wan Ting. And we're a host for Go, go with, with the, the Flow. Flow. So today we're going to go into another area of sustainability. That's right. Today we're going to learn more about wildlife conservation and biodiversity. Let's, Let's go! go. We are known as a garden city for our lush greenery and rich biodiversity. But we have limited land. How do we coexist with our flora and fauna in a highly urbanized environment like Singapore? Professor Siva Sorti tells us how our country has been doing and what else can we do. Hi Prof, thank you so much for having us here today. How has the ecosystem in Singapore changed in the past few decades? So Singapore is touted as a uh, rainforest in the tropics, right? Tropical rainforest. But the reality is that disappeared uh, by the 1900s. There was a lot of uh, use of the forest for materials. or places got cleared for agriculture. What we have now is the very precious parts uh, within the nature reserves. So would you say green spaces have been increasing or decreasing over the past, like say, 10 years with park connectors and new areas built by the government? If you think of the population back then, it was very small. Uh, and then now we keep increasing. We've heard number 6.9 million. So obviously we have to sacrifice uh, green spaces in, in order to be able to support populations. And population isn't just living space. It's a place for you to have a job. So office building, manufacturing, right, industry. Uh, then the balancing act of what can we afford to give up. So if you have manufacturing needs, let's hope manufacturing needs can stack up and use a smaller footprint. So then when that kind of understanding uh, gets to developers, uh, we are able to appeal to the idea that they can do so much with just so little. So what can individuals do like myself? Because if I'm not, let's say, in the community of advocate for like, environment, where can I start or what can I do? You can look up this page. So there's a directory of all the nature and environment groups. And there's a calendar of who's offering what activity. So that's completely volunteer run. And if you're a novice, you're like, oh, this one is tree planting or this one is coastal cleanup, this one is guided walk or that one is a survey. And generally, the Nature Environment Community, they welcome people. Thank you, Professor Siva, for sharing with us your knowledge and information about biodiversity in Singapore. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Providing healthcare services to animals, rescuing native wildlife and rehabilitating them is part and parcel of the job for Dr. Charlene Yong, Manager of Conservation and Wildlife Health at Wildlife Reserve Singapore. Hi, Dr. Charlene Yong. Thanks for being here. Can you tell us more about what do you do here at the Wildlife Reserve Singapore? Well, um, my role here is really as a, as a veterinarian and also I help to oversee the native wildlife rescues that come in and, uh, and the treatment and, and outcomes of, of those animals. How is the zoo involved in the conservation of wildlife? Modern zoos, um, like for example WRS, were involved in conservation in actually many, many different ways. Mm. So you know when we've got visitors coming into our parks, you know, and they, you know, they walk around and they, they look at the animals. At the same time, we're also trying to educate them on, you know, conservation uh, efforts and, and what they themselves can do for, you know, for conservation. We are actually also involved in other conservation projects in Singapore, also working together with many other stakeholders. You know, for example, and parks and you know the working groups for local bio biodiversity, and then uh, we're also involved in regional projects. It's quite diverse now, the role of modern zoos in, in conservation. So what are some of the examples of the species that you receive here? Sunda pangolin. So pangolins are also native to Singapore and they are a mammal that, uh, you know, really get covered with scales um, and they, they eat ants. You know, they're really quite special because they're critically endangered uh, all around the world. And Singapore, you know, have done quite well with the Sunda pangolins. You know, we seem to be a stronghold for the species. We often do get pangolins coming in with uh, road-related accidents. Mm. And in fact, in 2018, we had one male that came in and uh, you know he was still he was still very bright you know and he was still walking and uh, but he just seemed to be walking a little bit lame like you know the images the X-ray showed that he actually had a, a fractured leg yeah so so that was quite worrying you know and because they're covered with scales the the surgery was not as easy as it would be for a dog or a cat but he's recovered really really well so it was the first known you know like a uh, fracture repair for a pangolin that we know of. So, um, yeah, pangolins are definitely one of the weird and wonderful special uh, animals that we get here. Thank you, Dr. Charlene Yao, for sharing with us this behind the scenes look of what happens here at the animal hospital. Thank you very much Thank for you. having me. Thank you. 
And of course, meet Dr. Andy Ang, a primatologist in Singapore, also known as the Monkey Whisperer. She has devoted her time to research and conserve Singapore's primate population, specifically the Raffles Bandit Langers. Hi Andy, can you tell us a little bit more of what you do? So I'm a primate researcher studying the Raffles Bandit Langers in Singapore and Malaysia. A working group for the Langers was formed in 2016. Uh, with the Wildlife Reserve Singapore Conservation Fund and now Mandai Nature Fund. So it's a multi-stakeholder partnership where we have researchers, um, NGOs, government agencies in both countries coming together to kind of research on the species, their threats and what we can do to help them. So when it comes to conservation of wildlife animals, right, what can individuals like Wanti and I do to help? A lot that you can do. <laughs> First of all, it's really to find out more about say biodiversity in Singapore, our natural heritage, um, what we have left and their threats. So after you find out more about them, you can actually contribute by sharing this information with friends and family and then get them interested, for example, to go out there to nature to appreciate biodiversity. And the next step you can do is maybe help as citizen scientists. So you collect those data, simple data, like you know what animals you see, what they're doing, where are they? and provide this information to NGOs or National Parks Board so that it can help them uh, when it comes to conservation projects. So how do we strike a balance between urban development and wildlife conservation? You can actually make better or efficient use of land. Say, if it's a one-storey car park, you can turn it into a multi-storey car park. So you don't have to clear forests to build new buildings. Or you can actually look at facilities. If it's no longer in use, they can be converted or degraded land can be reforested so that you know it can bring forests back. So land development the way has changed in Singapore drastically for the past 10-20 years. How has that affected the primates in Singapore for the better or for worse? If I give you an example of say in the 80s and 90s when um, Bukit Timah Nature Reserve and Central Catchment Nature Reserve were still connected, um, the Langer population or the macaque population can still roam freely. But then with the construction of the Bukit Timah Expressway it kind of cut the two forests apart and the Langer population in Bukit Timah kind of went extinct in the 90s. Um, so that can be one consequence of separating, I would say like maybe cutting forests and separating the populations apart. Now that the Ecolink is built, we're just hoping that the Langers would find their way there uh, and repopulate Bukit Timah Nature Reserve. Thank you, Andy, for sharing with us your information and journey as a primatologist in Singapore and telling us more about conservation of wildlife. So, Andy, you mentioned you work as your job, right? Yes. Where would like to go? One thing would like to go to. I would like to go to. <laughs> yeah, let's go together. All right. See you next episode of Go with the Flow. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>